If you've just built a brand new gaming PC, you're probably wondering what on earth to do next. How do you get Windows installed properly? Make sure you're connected to the internet and have the right drivers installed and heck, even clocks that pesky memory up to the right speeds. Well, in this video, I'll be walking you through it all. Starting with the BIOS, showing you guys how to install Windows and finishing setting everything up A-OK -okay and making sure we're all good to get gaming as soon as possible. Let's do this. The first thing you need to do is grab yourself a monitor, a keyboard and a mouse. Make sure these are all plugged in correctly and that the monitor is connected to the graphics card and not to the ports on the motherboard. That's one of the most common issues I often find people facing. Ensure that the switch on the power supply is set to one and not zero, as without that, the whole thing isn't gonna turn on and then hit the power button on the top of your PC case. Once you've done this, you want to repeatedly hit the delete key on the keyboard. You're gonna continue to press this as the system cycles through all of its initial boot up settings and this can take a while especially in the first instance. We should hopefully then see a splash screen on the monitor, lovely stuff and be taken straight into the BIOS. If you're having trouble getting into the BIOS there's a couple of things to check. First is the power button wired up correctly on the case, if not go and fix this. Second is the monitor input set to the correct one. So if you've got a HDMI plugged in make sure it's set to HDMI 1 or 2 as often the auto doesn't always get things right. Then I want to quickly check all of my hardware is detected properly. I know I've got four randoms of eight gig each and I can see here, yeah, one, two, three, four are all popped up. And I can also see it's picking up my CPU just fine, the i5-13600K. I then want to go down to this setting called XMP. Now this will be located in different areas depending on the motherboard BIOS. This is the Asus one, so it's nice and easily on the home page. And if we enable this, you can see now it's picked up the profile for the RAM, running at the correct rated speeds. XMP can make a huge difference to your memory performance, so make sure to tune this on. And if you need to adjust the speed, say you want to turn it down or up slightly, you can hit F7, jump into the AI tweaker or memory overclocking menu, and jump right down here to our memory and adjust any of the speeds that we like. So this is the profile that it's picking up from the RAM, but if you scroll all the way down, you can turn the DRAM frequency to whatever best suits the memory that you've gone for. Then, once we've done that, we need to generate ourselves a bootable Windows USB. This is basically the modern version version of the old Windows DVDs you used to put in a system to get Windows installed. And actually generating this USB stick is very simple. Grab yourself a USB flash drive. Something that's USB 3 with about 32 gigs of capacity would be my recommendation. Simply then head over to the Windows bootable media tool, which we'll link below, on an existing Windows PC. Plug the memory stick in. It will format the drive to make sure there's no sensitive or important family files on there before creating a USB stick that we can now use to install Windows. Plug this into the one of the USB 3 ports on the back of your computer and hit F10 to save and exit. You can see it's going to give you all the changes that it's made, so it's turned our RAM speed correctly and changed the cast latencies. Hit enter and we should now be automatically booted into the Windows USB we just popped in the back of the machine. That looks promising. In theory now, we should be booted in. Yes, we are. The beautiful purple screen of relief to see the Windows tool and we can go through and just select all the settings. Now I'm in the UK, so I'm going to click United Kingdom and then head over to install now. This whole process to install Windows takes anywhere from five to 25 minutes, depending on the speed of your drives and all that sort of stuff. You either enter your license key at this stage or select I don't have one if you'd rather license it via your Microsoft login or add a key later. I'm gonna select Windows 11 Home as that's the key I'll be using, but if you've got a system with loads of memory and great for video editing, you might want the pro version instead. Accept all of Microsoft's terms and conditions, choose custom, install Windows only, and then go ahead and select the drive you want to install Windows on. A bit of a top tip for you, if you're installing multiple drives in a system, if they're the same capacities, they might look the same in this list. So uninstall the ones you don't want to install Windows on now, or before, of course, preferably the PC has turned on, and then that will just leave the one drive that you do want to use. If they're different capacities, it's much easier to determine which drive is which. It's then gonna go through and run through all this installation process. This bit can take anywhere from five to 20 minutes. It's perhaps the most time consuming part, but for me, it seems to be flying so far. So I'll see you in a few moments once Windows has gone ahead and installed itself onto this drive. You'll then see the Windows spinning wheel reappear for the very final stages of the installation. This is where it's gonna ask you about things like targeted ads, use of location. You can choose to answer these however you wish. And you can also add it into play here, your Microsoft account, if you have one. 
When it asks you to connect to the Wi-Fi, you may have varying levels of trouble here depending on your board. This motherboard seems pretty easy when it comes to connections, but some will need drivers. So that might mean leaving the Wi-Fi or Ethernet connection till later. If it does, simply skip this part and download the drivers from your motherboard's website, as you can see on the screen now, which will get you connected a bit later on. I've had a bit more luck in this case though, which should allow us to boot straight into Windows. And we are in. So rather handily, the first time you jump into Windows, you get this nice little start menu and there are a few things I want to do straight away. The first thing I'm going to do is install Chrome, mainly because I've got lots of drivers and other software to install and trying to do these by using Microsoft Edge just isn't going to end well. At this point, we also want to install GeForce Experience. Now that's because we've got an NVIDIA GPU. If you've got an AMD one, you want AMD's Radeon software instead and I'll link all of these down below. You then want to go ahead and just download the latest GeForce game ready drivers. If you've got an NVIDIA graphics card, it will detect the right one and make sure you've got the right driver installed. Now at this point you might find that your display is quite pixelated, everything's not rendering in properly. GeForce Experience or the AMD equivalent will fix that. Sometimes though, like now, you have a bit more luck. It tends to be a little bit 50-50 as to whether the drivers are installed before your screen goes into full res. But for the right gaming performance you need the drivers full stop. Go ahead and just select Express Installation and you'll be guided through all the appropriate steps to install the drivers. When it comes to graphics card drivers you want all the recommended settings, Nvidia and AMD AMD won't tend to put a load of bloatware on your system, so trust them and just go ahead with the Express install. And just like that, it's finished nice and successfully. The only other thing really to do now is head to the motherboard page for your particular motherboard design. So in this case, I'm gonna open up a tab on Chrome, not on Edge, who do you think I am? Chrome, please, thank you. And search for the Asus ROG Strix Z790A Wi-Fi. I've spelt that wrong, but Google's gonna help me out. Head over to the website and then go ahead and look at support. In the support section, this is the same for all the different motherboard manufacturers, you will find a driver's and utility section. Now in here, you'll pick your OS, Windows 11, and then you've got loads of drivers. So LAN drivers and wireless drivers, even if it's working like mine is, it's a good idea to get these in now. Make sure you avoid any problems later. Audio is of course for the audio ports on the back. VGA drivers, you won't need unless you've got just your Intel CPU and no extra graphics card. That's for if you use an integrated graphics. Bluetooth's another good one to have, even if you don't use it for gaming, it's nice for it to be working properly. And you'll also find some software for the Asus AI Suite. It allows you to overclock and monitor fans and stuff like that within Windows. And then also Armory Crate and Aura Creator. That's for your RGB and all your game specific settings. Once you've got all those set up, you might also want to go ahead and get some RGB control software. I've got an NZXT based build here. So NZXT Cam is what I'm looking for. But you might also find yourself interested in Corsair IQ or the various software suites from Cooler Master, Thermal Take, and loads of other brands like that. NZXT Cam Cam, where do I download this? Where's the download button? Ah, I clicked the wrong link. I want the first link, download cam. And that's gonna allow me to tune all the RGB. I'll give you a little bit of a rundown on how exactly this works as it's a similar principle across multiple different software suites. Also, can we just admire the talent here to actually use this monitor while looking at it from totally the side? I can't really see much, but we're getting there. A bit of a warning as well, ahead of using these RGB softwares, you need to make sure that you've actually got all of the RGB headers and USB ports plugged up correctly, as that's the only way you'll be able to find the items in your build. Now, if we jump through, we wanna go into lighting first of all and sort out our LCD display, because currently it's sideways. So we're gonna rotate the display, choose where the pumps are. They are down the bottom for me, save, and that's fixed already, lovely stuff. We can then go ahead and change all of our different RGB lighting. There's loads of different settings for like RGB waves. We've got like a white for a sleeker aesthetic, and you can go through and tune all of these as you wish. A couple of final bits of software I'd recommend. MSI Afterburner is great for overclocking the graphics card. NVIDIA Frame View is awesome for showing frame rates on both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, while Revatuner Statistics Server or RTSS is also fantastic for monitoring your system temps and that kind of thing. A great one though to install as well is a piece of software called Hardware Monitor Pro. It is free and let me show you how it works. I'm giving away all my secrets in this video, my trade secrets, Google Chrome, here we go. Hardware Monitor Pro. And we're gonna download that from CPU ID, which is the official site. This is a super, super small program. There's no bloatware or anything like that involved. Definitely worth installing on your build if you can. And the installation for this software is typically pretty rapid. I'll show you in real time, install, finish, boom, it's done. If we just put 
HWN Hardware Monitor Pro. Yes, and open up the software. There we are. Now, it's not the most pretty piece of software that you'll ever see. However, what it does allow you to do is dive through temperatures. So let me show you. Now, these are the motherboard temperatures. Our CPU is what we want. So you can see here, we've got all the different temperatures for the P and the E cores all broken down. You've got your max ones as well. So if you're seeing any throttling, you can go and take a look at how hot the CPU got at any point. You've also got all your different clock speeds, temperatures for your memory, super nerdy stuff. The main one really to look at is temperatures and clock speeds. If you're having any problems, Hardware Monitor Pro will show you that your graphics card or your CPU is running at 97 degrees and you've obviously got a bit of a problem with cooling. But otherwise, we're nearly done. One more thing, jump into Task Manager, which you can do by hitting Control Shift and Escape at the same time. Go down to the more details section, same for Windows 10 and 11. Head to Performance, Memory, and just double check that the speed is all good, 3200 megahertz. If you enable XMP and your RAM is not really liking it, the speed will automatically drop down to so check it's right. And if it isn't, go back in and try and iteratively find the fastest RAM speed that your memory is stably able to achieve. And just like that, your PC build is all ready to get gaming. If you found this video helpful, please do get subscribed and drop a like rating down below. Any questions, drop them in the comments and me or someone from the community will be sure to try and help. Thanks a lot for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Oh yeah.